Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and today we're going to be talking about the Hunter Guild update, at least the blog post in the potential Hunter Guild update. Honestly, Hunter has needed a pretty solid update for quite some time now, and recently Jagex said that they were going to be trying to add a Hunter Guild, and we now have an actual blog post, a pretty big blog post here too. Check all of this out, there's a lot of information here that they could be adding to the Hunter Guild. I'll be skimming over a few of these things, if we just decided to just sit here and read the whole blog post, it could end up being at least a third. 30 minute video and that is not my goal for this video. So the Hunter Guild is going to be in Varlamore, which is going to be a new area they're adding soon. Uh, it says here though, only the most experienced hunters can truly call the guild home. Those who use its old name, Core Venonatus, excuse me? Venetianus. Anyways, it says down here, once you've reached 46 Hunter, you can follow the dirt roads from Civitas. Ilfortis into the heart of the uh, dude way too many long names here I'm just trying to show it only requires 46 hunter to get into the hunter guild even though they say only the most experienced hunters can truly call it home Okay, honestly, I don't care too much about the level requirements to just get in the guild What you actually do in the guild matters a little bit more so first we have the hunters rumors Slayer has tasks farming has contracts and hunter will soon have rumors Whispers of creatures all across Galenor that you'll be tasked to tracking down and hunting They may be classic creatures that you've come to know and love or one of the many new hunter creatures that we plan to introduce with this update basically we're getting farming contracts but with hunter i've heard a decent amount of people complain about farming contracts and, and slayer a slayer makes a little more sense because slayer is actually locked behind this mechanic if you want to get slayer xp you have to go get a slayer task farming contracts and mahogany homes and stuff like that all it does is add more content to do with uh, with those skills, so I have absolutely no problem with Hunter's Rumors. If anything, the idea of these, these assigned tasks from an NBC, it gives you something to do if you have no idea what you want to hunt, and it just adds more rewards to the skill. So I see that all as a positive for sure. The Rumor tiers are currently as follows. Basic at 46, Tier 1 at 57, Tier 2 at 72, and Tier 3 at 91 Hunter. Why wouldn't they just go Tiers 1 through 4? instead of the second highest level being called tier one. I, it's not gonna make me vote no, but I really don't like how that looks. When you selected a rumor to investigate, set off, and prepare to hunt, while tracking down a rumor, you'll have a chance to grab special rare creature parts, which can be traded with the hunter you obtained the rumor from for bonus XP and a loot sack of useful hunter goodies like meats, furs, and bones. If you're lucky, you might also get some Varlamore specific items that you can use in other activities around the area, but that's not all. You can also obtain new hunter skilling outfit, which provides you with a plus 2.5% catch rate and 5% increased chance to get a rare creature part when wearing the full set. Also on offer are recharges for the Quetzal Whistle, which they'll talk about in just a sec, and your very own Quetzal Pet. Of course, the higher your tier, the more likely to obtain one of these items. Basic rumors won't roll on this table at all, so don't be scared to challenge yourself. Oh man, when they added uh, Herbivore and the Herbivore pet, I remember so many people being like, don't we already have a Hunter pet? First of all, the Hunter pet, the Chinchampa pet, can only be gotten from Chinchampas. So, yes, that is tied behind Hunter, but it's kind of ridiculous to call that a Hunter pet when, like, you couldn't get it from any other hunting method other than Chinchampas. So adding more Hunter methods and a different Hunter pet, I have no problem with that. I think pets are awesome. The Quetzal Transport Network, pretty much we're getting, like, uh, the Eagle Transport Network, but Quetzals in the Varlamore area. Make your way to the roost sitting atop the guild and look for one of these stunning creatures yourself and perhaps even get a chance to ride one. The guild's long-established nest work has travel points all across Varlamore and if you have the right hunter and construction levels, you can even build your own. Oh, kind of like being able to put down your own spirit tree in certain herb patches. Guild members are issued a Quetzal Whistle, which allows them to swiftly fly back to the guild from anywhere in Galenor except the wilderness, of course. So this Quetzal Whistle is going to be like a nice, probably one-click teleport to get to the guild. There are three tiers of Quetzal Whistle. You have the basic, the enhanced, made from you, and perfected, which is made from redwood. The basic Quetzal Whistle can store up to five charges, the enhanced up to 20, and the perfected version up to 50. After completing five rumors at any level, the Quetzal Master and the Roost will reward you with the basic Whistle Blueprint. You'll need this to obtain the blueprints for the enhanced and perfect variants, which you'll receive as a random drop from completing rumors. We're considering a 1 in 50 drop rate for these with a guaranteed Torn Enhanced Blueprint at your 100th rumor and Torn Perfect Blueprint at 250th. If the dry streak is too much to bear, the blueprints are also tradable. Interesting. You'll charge the whistle by feeding the Hunter Guild Quetzals their favorite snack, meats from Hunter creatures. The higher level the meat, the more satisfied the Quetzal will be, and the more charges you will receive. So overall, they're adding a potential bird transportation system, and also this whistle, which is going to be a teleport 
to the guild, and then you could be at the guild and use these birds to transfer all over Varlamore. Uh, but you're gonna need to charge that whistle doing hunter guild things. You're spending a lot of time with these birds as they travel the world. We want to give you the option to customize the Quetzal that comes to pick you up. These options will slightly change the look of your feathered friend, might even include design elements from other Varlamore content. How about a Colosseum Quetzal? It would be fun to give like more cosmetics. I'm a big fan of just adding cosmetic upgrades to a lot of things. So what about eagles? These noble beasts look, I'll shorten this paragraph for you. They're gonna add an eagle to the Hunter's Guild, so you're gonna be able to teleport to the Hunter's Guild with your Quetzal Whistle, then potentially use that eagle to get all to the other eagles and whatnot. This could make the eagle transportation system a little more helpful. I've never used the eagles to transport unless it's for that diary step. Now for the new creatures. They're gonna add Hunter creatures and they're gonna be updating and, and helping out the old Hunter creatures too. First of all, what about the new creatures? Moths. These scaly winged brethren of the humble butterfly. See what I mean about wordy? They definitely, they try to make the blog post like really exciting. Your boy wants to know the numbers. Just like butterflies, these creatures are trapped using a butterfly net in a jar and allow you to bestow buffs upon other players. Unlike butterflies, we're giving you the option to catch them with your own hands if you have the appropriate hunter level. You'll buff yourself and up to three players around you with one of the following effects. The Sunlight Moth, 65 to 75 hunter. Uh, these moths love the sun and restore 6 plus 20% of a player's reduced stats as well as 8 hit points. So kind of like a, a weak super restore potion with a little bit of health added. And then the Moonlight Moth, uh, lover of the dark, these moths would restore plus, or excuse me, 5 plus 10% of a player's level in prayer points. So we have uh, the Sunlight Moth would be uh, kind of like a super restore, and then a little bit of health, and the Moonlight Moth kind of like a weak prayer potion, but also able to work on players around you, not just yourself. You can also use these creatures in Hunter Mixes, a tradable two-dose area of effect potion that has the same effect as the moths. We're extending this to butterflies too, giving them a bit more utility. So that'll make it a little bit better for inventory space. You can use a, a couple doses per Potion. Honestly, even making them up to a four dose potion might make them a little bit more helpful. The idea of these moths and butterflies, which are currently, they have a use to them, but they're not used very often. Uh, they would be helpful for like actual team gameplay. Some of your team members could be a, a supply guy, like a healer, and whenever they use their moths or their butterflies or these potions, they would actually be healing up the whole team. Antelope, springy, agile, and fast. These four-legged mammals can be found wandering the Avium Savanna and the Hunter Guild. Successfully hunting these creatures with a baited deadfall trap will provide you with meat and horns. These have two variants, Sunlight Antelope and Moonlight Antelope, which will each give Sunlight Horns, Sunlight Meat, or Moonlight Moonlight Horns and Moonlight Meat. Moonlight Meat sounds delicious. Moonlight Horns can be used to upgrade the Hunter's Crossbow into the Moonlight Hunter's Crossbow, while the Sunlight Horns can be crafted into new ammunition specifically for that Moonlight Crossbow, and more on that in a moment. I will be very interested in the more on that. Jerboa. These little bouncy guys can be caught in a box trap. Successful catches reward you with Jerboa Tails, which can be crafted into bolas or be used as bait to trap foxes in deadfall traps. You'll need 39 hunter to trap them. We'll be talking about those bolas in just a minute. Fennec foxes. What does the fox say? Ah, I'm out. Uh, the foxes, they drop fox fur, meat, and bones, and those fox fur are probably going to be used for other things. Pretty classic hunter creature right here. The mountain salamander. Yes, dude. They're giving us another salamander. This is what I'm talking about, dude. More salamanders, bro. A new tier of salamander that can be caught with the usual net method. They'll require 79 hunter to catch and use new irrit tar as ammunition. Uh, they need 80 attack range and magic to wield. Let's see, plus 77 slash, plus 87 range attack, and plus 91 strength bonus. Not too bad, dude. Not too bad. I wonder what's going to happen with the Grandmaster task to use a black salamander only at Arma. I guess they wouldn't change it at all. Hunter meats and food. So they've talked a lot about like different meats that could be dropped uh, from each of these creatures. Let's see exactly what they do though. The gourmets at the Hunter Guild have developed a cooking method that gives your typical boring meats a bit of extra flavor and a delayed healing over time that gives you more HP than fish over a longer period of time. For example, Shark requires 76 fishing, 80 cooking, and can be cooked on any old ranger fire. They heal 20 hit points in one bite. <laughs> Dashing Kebit would require 69 Hunter, 72 cooking, uh, so a little bit easier to get to. It could also be cooked at any range or fire it, but they would initially heal 15 hit points and then a further 8 hit points X number of ticks later, which would be 3 more health than a shark. If you're not in a sticky situation where you need extra hit points urgently, Hunter Meats will provide a greater value overall. The system lets us push healing a little higher and gives you more options for pairing combat encounters. And best of all, it doesn't step on any toes. All of your existing dietary choices will have all the same benefits as they did before. First of all, I do like the idea of that. There's some foods like 
A basket of strawberries can be 25 health per inventory, but it's such a pain to like pull out five strawberries and eat five of them. So there are ways to get more health than you can out of like a shark or like a manta ray or something. Uh, outside of using Ceridum and Bruise, of course. But having still like the, the one click eat that's just now over time, you'll get a little bit of health back. I think that's a lot better design for being able to get more health out of your food. That being said, uh, the idea that it won't step on any toes of the other ones is kind of not true. Like it won't change the effect of other food. But if these uh, dashing kebits end up being like a lot better food than sharks, then people are going to stop buying sharks. Sharks will drop in price on the GE. Uh, that really only matters for people that are trying to make money with sharks in any way, shape, or form, but this clearly does affect other methods in some way, to be fair. Here's a table for, for all the different foods and whatnot. So, like, for instance, you have a trout that heals 7 HP. Instead, you could get the wild kebet, which heals 5 HP, then an additional 3, like a few ticks later, to be a little bit better than trout. If you go to the bottom of this list, though, this is kind of crazy. Dark crab and manta ray each heal 22 health. Instead, you can get moonlight antelope meat, which would heal 17 originally, and then 4, another 5, and cure some poison. That would actually be massive. 26 health plus poison cure in one food. That sounds awesome, dude. There is one catch. In order to unlock this new method of cooking, you'll have to complete rumors and get the guild's residents to trust you with their favorite recipes. And here's how that shakes out. 25 rumors for low-tier meats, 50 rumors for mid-tier meats, and then, of course, 100 rumors for those high-tier meats like the antelope meats. Honestly, that could be a really solid moneymaker right as the Hunter Guild comes out. If this stuff right here passes, not that many people are going to be able to actually make the Moonlight Antelope meat right away. You might want to be on top of that. I think the idea of updated food is actually really sick, and it's pretty cool that it would come through Hunter instead of just fishing, spreading out like they are saying exactly where you get your food sources from. New gear, new you. So they're actually going to add, this is an interesting set of gear here. As you no doubt have figured out, one of our goals for this content is to make the stuff you acquire from your hunts more useful. That's kind of like the first thing I was saying in this video is that Hunter needs a big update because most of the things that you catch with Hunter just aren't that useful. Hunter could be another very helpful gathering skill where you get higher level foods, things for better weapons, things for better armor, and they just, they really haven't had that big of an update for that until now. That's why the secondary use for hunting is mixed hide armor, a new range set that requires 50 defense and 60 range to equip. We're also thinking this set should be made from a combination of relatively high hunter furs like foxes and antelopes. This is where the fox fur would come in hot. This set is a range slash melee hybrid that gives you a welcome defense advantage while offering some significant strength based range gains. So basically if you look at this hunter set this is kind of interesting that it's got a it's got a bit of a range boost on it and a bit of a strength boost on it. I don't know exactly where this is going to be insanely useful because it is mid-level gear. Whenever they add something that's like mid-level gear and there's always something that is higher tier already in the game people will be like why don't you just use the better stuff You're like well this would kind of be a middle step for it and also like right now in my group iron man uh, i don't bring in like a, a melee top and bottom i just wear like my range gear while i'm meleeing if i was wearing this range gear instead at least i would get a little bit of melee strength out of that gear so this is kind of an interesting hybrid setup hunters bolas i think this has made the most waves so far especially with the pvp community Designed specifically for use by Varlamore's expert hunters, bolas utilize the physical strength of their wielder to snare and weaken their prey on the hunt. These ranged weapons are unique because they roll their damage based on your melee strength, which the mixed hide gear insinuated. They come equipped with a special attack costing 60% of your spec bar, which snares your opponent. The snare scales with your hunter level to a maximum of 15 ticks at 99 hunter. Note that if your target is preying against range attacks, the snare effect will be negated. For those wondering, this would be consumable and would work with the Ava's equipment line. We want to explore more options for the bullets as part of the Hunter in the future, and we'd love to hear your ideas about new exciting Hunter methods we could try. First of all, I love the idea of adding more upgrades for weaponry and stuff with Hunter. I think chins are like a pretty sweet mechanic that Hunter is useful, and there's a good moneymaker made out of that because chins are helpful. They're not extremely helpful, though. Like, if chinchampas were very useful at a lot of bosses, then hunting Chinchampas would be a great money maker. Something like Hunter's Bolas, uh, I don't see this being insanely helpful for PVM necessarily compared to like. If I was PVMing out in the wilderness, I would love to have a Hunter's Bola on me and be able to just kind of freeze a PKer with it without needing like ice spells or something, making it a lot easier to get out of the way. This could potentially be used by PKers to try to snare you while you're out there too. They're already doing that though. PKers are already showing up with like ice spells and whatnot, so that's not anything new. If anything, I do see this being 
somewhat helpful for trying to get away from PKers, honestly. It is interesting that this damage would be based off of your, your regular strength. Think about, like, the Void Waker. The amount of damage you do on the Void Waker is based off your actual melee strength, even though you do a magic attack. So you still, if you're set up with a melee setup of gear and switch to the Hunter's Bola, could do pretty solid with it. In general, it does line up well with their, uh, the mixed, what was it, the mixed hide gear. Improving existing content. Here's where the Hunter's Crossbow comes in hot. I forgot this was even a weapon in the game. This niche weapon offers great range and faster shots than any other crossbow, but it sits at a fairly low level, is pretty inaccurate, and the bolts that you need to use are harder to craft than regular metal counterpart. We want to breathe some life into this neglected weapon by allowing skilled hunters to upgrade it into the Hunter's Moonlight Crossbow using Moonlight Horns from the Moonlight Antelopes. The upgraded version will require 66 range and 50 hunter to use, 74 fletching to craft it. It comes with a plus 5 range accuracy at the cost of a slightly slower 5 attack speed, 4 on rapid, which does make it faster than a regular crossbow. It also lets you use a new type of bolt crafted from antelope horns with a powerful plus 85 range strength bonus. This puts the mighty Moonlight Crossbow close to the Rune Crossbow in terms of power and slightly nicer attack speed boost. We reckon this will make it well worth in the end of crafting the right ammunition. That's interesting. I mean, in general, uh, it's still not going to be the highest level crossbow, but a crossbow being a little bit faster is going to be kind of nice. It goes back to the same thing that I said with the mixed hide gear. If you already have a weapon that's better than where this weapon's going to land, then it might seem kind of useless to you, uh, but it's it's good to be filling in some of those mid-level slots. We don't need to jump from, like, rune crossbow to, to armor crossbow. I guess there's a dragon crossbow in there, too. There's a lot of crossbows, dude, and they all attack at the same speed, except for this one. Hunter's pouches. One of the biggest issues with Hunter at the moment is how quickly you can fill up your inventory. Oh, we can we can skip down to this, but this is awesome. Hold on. The, uh, the pouches will actually hold all of your stuff. Alongside making furs and meats worth keeping in the first place, we'd also like to give you the option to craft hunter pouches, which will store up to 28 of those core hunting resources. The pouches will work much like rune pouches, and you'll need the previous version to upgrade to the next. And they also want to do meat sacks, which would only be able to store meat. Yeah, a lot of hunter training just requires you to drop the supplies you're getting, unless it was giving you, like, noted supplies. So I think Hunter Pouches would be pretty sweet. Hunter Outfits. Aside from pretty gnarly fashion scape, the Hunter Outfits made from Larupia, Grok, and Kayat fur are basically useless. We want to give them a purpose, a damage reduction bonus only against Hunter creatures that applies while you're wearing the full set. This will let you spend more time hunting the most dangerous beast while racking up XP. I can't really think of a Hunter method that you take damage off the top of my head, but... I could see this still being a good update. I have no problem with this at all. Trap storage. This is one's very simple. They're they're looking to give us like a, a tackle box, like you have for fishing, which holds all your fishing tools. But instead, for hunters, so they're like one box that can hold all of your traps, making it a lot easier, uh, a lot less like inventory space needed for stuff. I think it's a pretty simple update that definitely should be added. And that is gonna be it for this Hunter's Guild log. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff in there that they want to add that looks very interesting. I'm pretty easy to please when it comes to new updates. So just having totally new stuff to work with and new stuff to play in the game is very exciting to me. Uh, I'm mostly interested in the food though, dude. The moonlight answer meat, antler meat, excuse me. Uh, that looks crazy, being able to heal all that health and, and cure poison and whatnot. I'm very interested in that. For a long time now, Hunter has really not been that great as a skill. Most people complain about training it because it's just kind of boring to train and there's not that much use to it. Uh, like I said, chinchampas could be a decent cache, but they're just not as useful in that many places to use like for fighting, so they're not actually incredible cache. In fact, I feel like they're mostly used for getting range XP on like maniacal monkeys and stuff rather than going to like armadil and whatnot. But having more things that you can get from Hunter that'll actually affect like PVM and maybe even other skilling methods. Like Hunter is a gathering skill at the moment that most of the things you gather, you just kind of drop it. Like you're just there to hunt for the XP. The actual loot that you're getting from Hunter currently not that helpful. So I think these updates and adding a little bit more helpful stuff for Hunter is going to be phenomenal. It's exactly what we would want for the Hunter guild. I also kind of skimmed over that outfit you're going to be able to get from Rumors. The extra 2.5% catch rate for that full hunter skilling outfit is going to be pretty solid. 2.5% is not massive. That's really where all of these skilling outfits go to is like a 2.5% increase, except for the, the rune crafting one. Most of those 2.5% though, that's an XP thing. So 2.5% catch rate, this will also help out with your money that you're making from hunter. I think that's everything with this hunter guild update that I'm looking at, ladies and gentlemen. This vote should be going 
going out. Nah, it, actually, the poll might be up like the same day that this video goes out. The poll's not open yet, but they're about to be polling all of these options. So get out there and vote for what you want from the new Hunter's Guild. Thank you very much for watching this sort of discussion video on potential upcoming content, everybody. If you enjoyed the video or just got some useful information, be sure to like and subscribe for even more content. I do stream on Twitch, which is hopefully somewhere on the screen and linked in the description. So if you want even more content, be sure to follow me on the Twitch side of things. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and best of luck on voting for your hunter grinds.